Welcome back, everyone. Uh, who here likes mac and cheese? No one? Just joking. Of course we like <laughs> mac and cheese. It is a great comfort food. But have you ever made it without cheese? Here to show us how to do it and still get ooey, gooey, delicious results is Stephanie Manzanelli. We love that you're here. Our vegan babe. And I'm not just calling you a vegan babe. That's literally what you're called. Yes, that is my name, Instagram name. <laughs> right, vegan babe. I don't want people to be like, she's such a predator, that Tracy Moore. She's vegan babe. So you are like, you're a vegan magician. When you come on here, you make these beautiful recipes and they taste so good. And I know there are people that are still a little bit skeptical about anything plant-based, but you are doing God's work with your recipes, my friend. So we, like, you're gonna give us a vegan cheese that tastes like cheese. Yes. Right? So how do we start the recipe? Let's get going on that mac and cheese. Yeah, so this mac and cheese, the base of it, you can make mac and cheeses with a ton of different bases, uh, but our base today is gonna be potatoes and carrots. So okay. I just chop them up here and throw them in the water to boil for about 15 minutes. And yeah. then once they're fork tender, that's how you know they're gonna be done. You could even add in like some rices and other types of grains and stuff. Nice. Because what really gives you the cheesy flavor. Yeah. Just Good make stuff. sure that gets into the blender there. <laughs> <laughs> what really gives you that cheesy flavor is this here, which is nutritional yeast. I'm just going to show them this. We've talked yes. about this before on um, City Line, and when I was first in introduced to it, I'd sprinkle it in the kids' popcorn. And yeah. they like it. It's almost like having cheesy popcorn. Yeah, and it's ton, there's like tons of uh, protein in there, vitamin B12. So it's actually really good for you as well. Yeah. And this is what the magic is. Like, this is what makes vegan cheeses taste like cheese. And yeah, it has so many different purposes. Beautiful. So we're also going to add in a little bit of lemon juice just to give it a little bit of tang because nice. cheese has cheese tang. Cheese has tang, exactly. Yeah. And then for that golden color, we're going to use turmeric which is a really good anti-inflammatory as well. Yes. But we're just going to put a little bit just because it does have a really strong, strong flavor. I just like that it's going to have that, you know, fluorescent orange cheese color. Exactly. That we want to see in our mac and cheese. Super aesthetic. Yes. We love it. We love it. <laughs> and then what's in there? So these are our flavor enhancers. Okay. We have some onion powder and garlic powder. Beautiful. And then we're going to go in with some vegetable broth. You could also use like a plant-based milk or even just water if you don't have either. Okay. And then of course, cheese is salty, so yes. we got to add salt, 100%. Beautiful. All right. So this is the cheese. That is the cheese. I know it doesn't look like it yet, but yeah. it will. <laughs> it smells good Gotta already. Trust the process. Yeah. yeah. I smell so like the garlic powder. It's yummy. And just because for the, you know, we're on television, we're going to fast forward that step and go straight yes. to what you've got blended right there. Yeah, so this Which is the blended cheese. up cheese. It looks nice. like cheese, right? It does look like cheese. And then since we used warm potatoes and carrots, yeah. this sauce is going to oh. be warm and ready to go. Isn't that super cheesy? I would actually use that. Could you use that for, um, you know, the fluorescent nachos we like to get when we go out what? to the movie theater? Like 100%. I love using this as nachos as like yes. a dip for like pretzel bites on game day, even yes. for like vegetables. I also add a little bit of reserved pasta water. Okay. That's just going to help it get it even more creamy and dreamy. And at this point you could also add in like some broccoli if you wanted or maybe like a plant-based sausage. I would give be it some like, protein. If I was eating my mac and cheese with this kind of cheese, I would I would say to myself, I am excused from even putting in any more vegetables. That's true. Because your base was carrots and potatoes, Very which is true. excellent. Yeah, it's a little sneaky veggie action. I love it. Love it when you can eat veggies, but it doesn't actually feel like it or taste like it. Oh, so you also have this. Yeah, was so we're just going to plate it cheese? up. Yes, that is just for topping. A little bit of parsley. You could do chives, whatever, whatever floats your boat, really. This is a <laughs> serving for one. 100%. I think I should just try it to make sure. Oh, yeah. Give it Cheesy, up. Cheesy, right? Give it up. Very good. Vegan magic. Vegan magic. <laughs> okay. We've done dinner. We're going to do dessert. You were yes. going to show us how to make a chocolate chip cookie with, uh, with no chocolate, really. Well, we're doing it out of chickpeas. Yeah, well, there is chocolate in there, but yes. it is chickpeas, so there's no flour. There's no so flour. So it's totally chickpea based. Got it. And this is a really great healthier alternative. Super easy to make and kids love this as well okay. because it looks just like a chocolate chip cookie. Yeah. So of course we need some chickpeas. That is the base of our cookie. Just from a can? Yeah, just one can strain and rinsed. Beautiful. And then we're going to go in with some peanut butter. Nice. Now you could use any other nut butter that you like here. You could use a nut free butter. This is basically just like the fat source so it's going to make it nice and moist and fluffy. Yeah. 
and rich and creamy. 100%. And then for our sweetener, we're going to go in with some maple syrup. Beautiful. A little bit of vanilla. Oh, nice. And then baking powder, baking soda. And of course, just a little bit of salt because that's just going to make the sweetness pop. It's always good with chocolate, right? 100%. Yeah. Now, this takes a little bit to blend. This is going to take about three, four minutes. You're going to want to scrape the sides of the blender just to get it's everything chunky. moving. So I have pre-blended it for us. Yeah. And now, of course, we're going to add in our chocolate chips. Mm -hmm. And with chocolate chips, you always measure with your heart. Oh, I love that. There's... I have a very big heart, Stephanie. <laughs> yeah, so. so let's put lots of chocolate I feel chips like that in. that means a lot of chocolate. <laughs> and then that's it, really. You just mix it up and then divide it into cookies. Okay, so when you usually are at home making cookie batter, they always say on the packages, do not eat the batter, it's not good for you. Can you eat this batter? 100%, that's another reason why these cookies are so amazing. Nice. Because there's no eggs in it, so it doesn't have, it's not gonna upset your stomach, you don't have to worry about it being like contaminated or anything. I was gonna get you to do the first one so that I could see how it, it needs to be, but there's nothing specific there's no about here. that. There's yeah, no there's rules There's no rules. <laughs> We're just, with these cookies though, they don't flatten, so you're just gonna wanna like flatten them into okay. the shape that you want, but you can make them super big or super tiny. Now, they are gonna be baked in real life. Here, yes. we have them baked already. We do. Which one's the oven? Okay, this mm -hmm. one. <laughs> there you go. You can thank show you, the people. You. And we have the cookies here. Oh my gosh. So they are a little bit different. They're more of like a dense cookie. They're not They're the beautiful. Same. So as we go um, to break, and by the way, the recipes at cityline.tv, let me just test this. It's really good. And moist. So good. 